Forget color grading. One setting in your camera can instantly take you from this to this without using raw logs or LUTs. Boy, do I have a video for you today. I am going to blow your mind. Yeah, I know, I'll get to this in a second. I'm shooting 16K, 12-bit, 444, 120 frames per second. Down sampled to 24 for that film look. That's 500 megabytes per second. I've got my RGB lights in the background for that blue and purple background. I'm shooting F1.2 for that cinematic look. And of course, if you're on YouTube, it's mandatory you need to wear a hat. So there's all that. Now there's one more thing, and that is you're a loser if you don't shoot raw or log. Right? Okay. There. Isn't it so much better? <laughs> I can always tell when YouTubers are using raw or log. It's got this dull gray, dark, washed out look to it and they're brainwashing and believing it looks better. Raw or log is for when you're out there in the sunlight and you got this bright light and the sky is washed out white and the shadows are black and you need to bring up the details and the shadows and all that. You need more dynamic range and that's what that's for. But when you're in a controlled environment like this, like most people have, and you've got full control of your lighting, you don't need it unless you don't know how to light properly and expose properly, in which case you shouldn't even have a photographer channel but there are times where you do go out in the world and you don't have control of the lighting and you do need that the downside of raw and log is you got huge file sizes and then the computer runs really slow and you have to do color grading and post-processing and all this crap it's a hassle well what if you didn't have to do that what if you could go from this to this without using lights raw log no post-processing no color grading just one little change in your camera what you see is what you get you push record you're done small file sizes you are happy and you're you have a life wouldn't that be great i'm going to show you how to do that today it's going to blow your mind almost any camera can do this here we go Obviously, the first step is to try and light everything properly with lights, reflectors, and flashes. If you can't because the dark stuff is too far away, like trees and buildings in the background, then we need to move on to the next options. The usual way is to shoot everything as best you can and then boost shadows and highlights in post while editing, which works to a degree, but only so much. Then there are various picture profiles and logs available in your camera, or you could create a custom profile and set contrast all the way down, or you could use a low contrast filter, but those all require some sort of color color grading adjustments later on when editing. And low contrast filters, by the way, are kind of deceiving. They're in the same category as fog, mist, frost, and diffusion filters. They bloom out the highlights and wash over the darker areas, which gives the appearance of lightening them, but it's basically just like a lens flare that washes out the picture, and it does not magically bring details out of the shadows. But again, these all require adjusting levels in post. This video is mainly about getting what you want right away in the camera with no post-processing needed. Okay, let's take this scene for example. Here's an image with parts that are too bright, like the sky, and too dark, like the trees. The first option is not a practical one, and I never use it, but I'll mention it real quick, and that's HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range. And it's only for pictures, not video. It takes three pictures really fast, bam, bam, bam. The first one is underexposed, the second one is properly exposed, and the third one is overexposed. It takes the lighter one and uses that information in the shadow areas to brighten it up. It then takes the darker picture and uses the information to darken the parts of the overexposed areas like the sky, and it stitches all three together to produce a final image. And the results can be quite amazing, but it's not something most people can use for a number of reasons. First, you can only shoot non-moving objects or else the image will be blurry because it's taking three pictures and blending them together. So you cannot take pictures of people, animals, and in many cases not even landscapes if the trees and bushes are moving. And even if everything in the picture was completely still, you'd still have to use a tripod. And even if you used a tripod, you'd have to use a timer because just pushing the shutter button down with your finger will cause enough movement across the three pictures to create blur. You can get some amazing results with HDR, but again, it only works with still pictures, not video. And even if you were doing still pictures, you can't use flash. So HDR is quite impractical. Okay, so now we move on to the good stuff. Each camera brand has a slightly different approach. Sony has a setting called DRO, which stands for Dynamic Range Optimizer. What this does is after you take a picture, but before it saves the image, it automatically lightens the dark areas and with less noise than if you did it in Photoshop or an editing program. And unlike HDR, DRO can be used with both stills and video. You can adjust the amount of the effect it has. There's auto or manually setting it from one to five. Auto gives a little weak boost, but not much. This is a standard basic picture. Look how little you can see in the dark areas. And this is with DRO set to level five. What a difference. And this is just a little pocket camera. Okay, that's Sony. Panasonic Lumix has something similar called iDynamic. Here's a normal picture. 
and this is with iDynamic. Panasonic and Olympus also have another really cool option. It's called Highlight Shadow, where you can separately boost highlights and shadows with curves. This is way cool. Again, this process happens before the image is saved, so you don't have as much grain noise as you would if you did it afterwards in Photoshop or an editing app. And it brings out even more information and color. You can get some real magic when you combine Highlight Shadow with iDynamic. One of my favorite combinations is having Shadows Plus 5 and iDynamic at standard. There's so many ways you can manipulate the image in the camera and get some really good results. Here I am using it to tame harsh shadows while I'm walking. So let's get out in the real world and put this stuff in action. No lights, flashes, or reflectors. We're just going to lighten the shadows with iDynamic turned on or using the highlight shadow curves. This is a normal shot. Notice the darker areas. And voila! Look at that. Before, after. Before, after. It's like having a secret superpower that allows you to see in the dark. Look at this one. Before, after. No logs, LUTs, or RAW. Before, after. No lights, flashes, or reflectors. Before, after. No photoshopping or color grading. Before and after. Instantly done the moment you press the shutter. And no huge picture files or videos. You are in full control while you're taking the picture or video. Before and after. It almost looks like you put a beautifying filter over the picture, but you didn't. This is just dynamic range adjustment in the camera and it makes the picture look more softer and dreamier. It's not as harsh looking. And if you want to darken the shadows a bit later, I guess you could always do that. But I mean, I like these just the way they are. It just looks so good. Some cameras have picture profiles and logs that are ready to use as is. You don't have to do any adjusting and the shadows are already lightened. So check your camera to see if it has something like that. But I find you get better results and closer to what you want if you make your own adjustments in the camera. And these are just cheap consumer cameras. No expensive heavy cinema cameras. No sitting at the computer for hours making adjustments. No loading LUTs or re-rendering the shot. Click, you're done. All right, I just saved you a whole bunch of time sitting at the computer doing color grading, having big file sizes and having uncontrollable lighting situations. I made your life a lot easier, hopefully, with this video. That's what this channel is about. I hope you got something out of it. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.